Well, hi, everybody. I hope this is going out to the Bully Rock folks here, but uh, I'd like to thank uh, John uh, Trancucci, who's in the audience today. He is the one that set up the Pinaco Club that meets every Monday at 1230 here at the clubhouse, and you're all invited to come, and when there's not enough players, we still have some people that roam around and help other people, so there's no limit to how many people can come and just, just show up, 1230 on Mondays. I guess I should start out now by introducing myself. My name is Al Spath. I am a poker coach, live uh, poker coach, online poker coach, and I teach people around the world. Um, but I also love Pinochle. Um, it's one of my favorite games to play, and I've played it since I was eight years old and got taught by my father in Orchard Beach, New York. Single deck, you use the nines in the deck, and you deal out 12 cards to each player, and you put the rest of the cards on the table, and, and then you play what they call tricks, and I'll explain tricks, and then you pull off the deck. You always replace one card, so you always have 12 cards in your hand, but some of it might be a meld. Every time you take a trick, you're allowed to meld. Anyhow, that's how he, he taught me how to play. And then as I advanced, I watched him and my brothers play uh, Contract Pinochle, which is, there's all forms of Pinochle. There's a three-handed Pinochle, where three cards are put in a hiding place on the table, and people bid, whoever takes the bid, then gets those cards. And then you can play it four-handed. And then you advance to what we're going to talk about tonight, and that's double-deck pinochle. It is very difficult to shuffle a double-deck. It's hard enough for some people for a single deck, whether it be poker or any, any game, hearts, any game that you play, bridge. So what I recommend, and I was instructing one of the ladies last week at 1230, was take, take about half, and then just shuffle half, then take the other half, and just shuffle the other half, then you can kind of put them together or you can, you can uh, cut them into each other. It doesn't matter because they'll be mixed up well enough. So don't trip over the easy things when you're starting out playing Pinochle. It's, don't make it more difficult. It's hard to hold the cards. Everybody at four-handed double-deck Pinochle is going to get 20 cards, okay? 20 random cards dealt, and you can deal by twos. Four players. Okay, I'm sorry. Four players. Do most people play with double decks? Most people that play Pinochle and love the game play double deck, okay. yes. It, it, it becomes something different when you play three-handed or two-handed, and that's because somebody didn't show up or you can't count on somebody. But normally when you go to somebody's house and you're going to play Pinochle, it's easy two couples, you know, and, and it's you divide up the couples. The couples never play as partners. They always <laughs> <laughs> you got to divide them up. <laughs> so anyhow, um, you've got to know how to deal the cards, and you can go around in a certain amount. You can go by ones, but that'll take forever. So most people recommend you go by two or by four. Four is the easiest way. You can't go by three because you don't have the right amount of cards. You've got, as I see here, I've laid out here, this is one suit. The four aces, four tens, four kings, four queens, four jacks. The ace is the best card. It's not a low card. There are no nines. We've taken the nines out of the deck for double deck. We don't play with a nine. Okay? So the best card is an ace, followed by a ten, a king, a queen, and a jack. All right? So when you hold your hand, or you have your cards in your hand, I'm just going to demonstrate this for you, it is always best to put it in that fashion right there with the highest card, then the next highest card, so that when we're playing, and I'll explain it in a couple of minutes, that you follow suit or that you have to beat a certain suit, you know where your cards are. If you somehow scrunch them up and miss the king, you might misplay something, then somebody catches it later on, and we'll talk about that. That would be a misplay or an egg, and it could cost you the game or at least a lot of points, okay? So the, the game of Pinochle can be as hard as you want to make it or as easy as you want to make it. It's a, it's a fun game, but in the beginning, it's difficult because there's so many different things you have to, to learn. All right? Let me just boil it down for everybody here. The whole idea of the game is for you and your partner to outbid the other person or persons, okay, and take the bid if you can. 
When I say if you can, that means you have to have enough meld, and I'll talk about meld, and enough good cards like aces that are going to take tricks. Each time that four cards go out in the middle, that's a trick. Okay, each trick goes to the person with the highest card played. If it's a tie, like two aces, the first person that put the ace is the person that wins the trick. Okay, and you, we'll, we'll, we'll go through that whole system um, as we go along. What you need to know about these cards here are the jacks and queens are pretty much worthless cards. Some circumstances they come into play, but they have no point values. They still can take a trick. They can still be a, a trump, and I'll talk about that a little later too. But first off, the ace is the most dominant card, and it takes priority over everything. Then the ten, then the king. These are all worth one point. The kings, tens, and aces. Even though they're, these are better than these, and these are better than these, they're all worth one point. So anytime that you're playing, and I'll demonstrate that later also, and I, I know I keep kicking a lot of things later, but I have to explain this first, so it's just bear with me. Anytime that you're playing a hand and your partner has a chance to give you a point, they want to give you a king first, then a 10. Always give the lowest point and keep the highest card because that card might play later on and take a trick. So you don't want to give up a 10 and keep a king and then later on see that if you had a 10 you would have won a, a, a trick. So always give it the lowest points, the kings first, then the, then, the, then the 10s. When you give jacks and queens, you're not helping matters because your opponents are going to give you all the jacks and queens. They have no value. So every time you play an ace, they're going to give you what we call crap. Okay, the queens and jacks are pretty crappy cards and that's what they're going to give you. So when your partner does the same thing to you and you get three crappy cards, you make only one point and you really want to make two, three or four points in every hand. Did you have a yeah. question? What if you've got two aces, a trump and one jack? Aren't you going to play the jack to let your partner know you've got a trump ace? Well, we're going to get to that in a second, but She's saying, she's asking the question, Marion's asking the question, if you have, uh, my partner, let's say, if I named, and we didn't get to what Trump is yet, but if, let's say I named Hearts Trump, and she knows I have an ace, and she has two. Even though she has two aces, we don't know if this person here has the other ace. Okay? So, I don't have a direct route to her at this point. I need to find a way, because whenever I play my aces, then I want to have my partner come in and, and play that. We'll, we'll get get to all that but that's a that's a good point that, that you bring up okay so we've dealt out the cards and and by the way john has been, has been very instructive in in the meetings at 12 30 on, on mondays if i haven't said it once i'm going to say it a couple of times throughout this thing you only need to bring a, a score pad and a pencil the cards are provided the, the chairs are provided uh, the table's provided. There's even some food there. I don't know who brings the food, but it tastes pretty good. It shows, shows up. And you need the pinochle cards. And again, John was nice enough to make sure I got a double deck here tonight. During the day or at night? Twelve thirty in the afternoon on Mondays. Yeah. If there was a clamor for it a different time, I'm sure he would entertain that. But you know, he's the one that set it up. He runs it, and I'm just doing the demonstration because he said I'm not getting in front of that camera. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow you got all these cards that are like this and and when the bidding starts um i think I, I i i i talked about the deal and let me talk about the meld before i talk about the bidding okay because it'll make a little bit more sense all right meld m-e-l-d is what you put on the board that has a value prior to playing. This has nothing to do with the tricks and the values of the one on this. So for instance, a run, they call a run, ace, ten, queen, jack, and it's in, all on the sheets there and everything, is 15 points, okay? That's, that's a lot of points in the game. There's only, there's a few hands that are higher than that, but with just a single amount of cards like this, that's, that's, a, that's a lot, okay? So, Within, within this is a marriage. Anytime you see a queen or a king, that's called a marriage. There's no divorcing. There's no getting the house. There's no, it's just, 
Go away. <laughs> it's not a good situation sometimes when, when uh, you don't have enough marriages. Okay? This is the first time in your life you only want that certain marriage. And you've got to have a marriage to name Trump. Okay? This is really important. And, and John adjusted the rules here recently because they were playing a little different style. Everybody in the, different con in the country plays a little bit different. I'm trying to give you the, the general rules. So to name Trump, you have to have a marriage in that suit. You don't have to have a run. I might have two marriages in this and three aces of hearts, and I have maybe a whole bunch of other meld, which I'm going to get to in a second, and that'll make up for my deficiency of not having the 15 points for the run, okay? So you don't have to have a run. Today, Marianne was telling me somebody, uh, maybe it was you, had a double run, which is two of these got dealt to the same person, which is 10 cards out of the 20 that got a double run. I've had 13 in a suit once. I had 14 in a suit once, but it was a missed deal. And, and, and it was, I had 20, but somebody else had 21 cards and somebody else had 19 cards. But I had 14 of them and I couldn't get to play them. But anyhow, if you get double of anything, you usually, except for pinochles, double pinochle, you put a zero on the end of it. So this was 15. If you get two of these, it's 150. It's hard to get. It really has a multiplier. All right. If you had um, a different hand, such as, uh, here, I got them over here. Aces around, which is really good to have, aces around, that's 10 points. So how much is double aces around? 100 points. So that's a, keep it simple, that's the best way. Anytime you have aces, your partner loves you. Anytime you don't have aces, to help him or her out, they think you sandbagged them and you're just worthless, you know, because they expect, they expect you to have, they expect you to have something, okay? They're looking for help from their partner. Sometimes you have it and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you might have 40 mail to give them, which is really great, that's gonna help them, but you don't have but one ace and that means you can't help take tricks. And along with the meld, and we'll get to the bidding, you have to be able to take enough tricks that you gather 20 points. If you don't gather 20 points <clears throat> and you took the bid, then you're gonna go what they call set. You go back, if I bidded 60 for instance and I didn't make 20, and I didn't make my bid, I go back 60 on the, on the score sheet, okay? So aces are 10, so that would mean that kings R8, okay, comes down in value. So how much are double kings? 80. 80. Queens are six. Double queens is 60. Jacks are four. Double jacks is 40. The only exception to this silly rule to, that I made easy for everybody here is this one. A pinochle is four. This is called a pinochle. A queen of spades and a jack of diamonds. Not the queen of clubs and the jack of hearts. People try that. And, you know, they try all kinds of things. They miss. They say, oh, I got a pinochle. Or, I got that. It has to be the correct cards. And this is the pinochle. And if you got two of them, it's called double pinochle. And it's 30. Okay? It's 30. Now, what is the logic of it not being 40 if one of them is four? This should be a zero on it, but it isn't. Only because I went and looked it up. It's easier to make this little bit than it is to make double kings, double queens, double jacks. Because you need so many more cards to do it. This is a little bit more easier. And that's just online, looking it up, and, and people's opinions in different forms. The majority of them said it was that reason. For whatever that may be, that's, that's the way it is. So anyhow, when you have kings around and queens around, that means four kings and four queens, that also means you have four marriages, a marriage in each suit. So rather than count up, well, I got eight for the kings and six for the, 
the queens, and I got two, 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 and four for the marriage in Trump, and then you have to do it in your head. If you just know that a marriage in every suit, if you have it, that's 24. It's just an easy way to remember. It's just, it's 24. It's always been 24. I just remember it being 25 growing up. If, if it was 25 going up, you well, should, we, you got to call that person up on the phone and tell them they need to redo it because it can't be 25. No, really. I mean, I think they just added the extra point because the, of the difficulty. Of, yeah. They may have. They may have. So anyhow, when, if I'm, if I take a bid and we'll, again, we'll talk about that and I have a run, which is 15 and I have kings around, which is eight, that's uh, 23. And let's say I have another marriage. That's marriages are two points. That's twenty-five, and and then I have a marriage in spades. That makes it twenty-seven because it's two more. And then a jack of diamonds makes a pinocchio makes it thirty-one. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't have the queen of clubs, so I, I don't have the queens around to make that. So I have thirty-one points there. That would be my meld. Okay. Whatever I have in my hand, I have to put down that's meld on the board. It's imperative for the other team to look. I notice on Mondays, nobody looks at meld. Nobody looks at meld. It's important for me to know how many in my suit I see on the board, who, who has them. For instance, if I name Trump and hearts and you're over here and you put down a run in Trump, then I know the power to, is to my right. Or if you put two marriages down in my trump and maybe you have uh, aces around and I know you have four trumps and an ace at least, at least, so I, I always add an extra one or two. So you got six or seven of my trump and I know I got to be careful about it. But I also want to see, you know, who might be short in some suits and stuff like that because I, I want to I want to look around the board and I just want to take a survey of all the cards kind of to, to put in my head to say oh this person's got plenty of clubs and this person's got looks like they got play. enough for me to play my aces when I come out playing I know that they're not going to get trumped um, when I play them so it's important that you know how to meld and what everything's worth. Does there anybody have any question about what something is worth and meld? I just have a question. Um, you seem to be able to put the, uh, the jack of diamonds with the queen of spades that was already in a marriage. Right. So you can use that. Queen twice. You can't take that, that marriage and use it in a run. Sure, yeah. I, if I had a run, if I had a run. It counted as a marriage and as a run. If I have a, let's say I had a run in spades, that's 15, and then I put the pinochle down, that makes it 19. When you count the marriage in a run, you don't count it as a two or four. That's part of the 15. Right. So you don't double count that. Okay. If you have another marriage in spades, you lay that down and you get four for that. Okay. okay. So it would have to be another one. You can't. But the, but the way you were doing it there, it looked to me like you were using the Queen of Spades twice. You were using it as a marriage, and you were using it as a marriage. That's correct. I and was. That's the only time you do that. That's true. Where you can use it both ways. That's true. With that, with those two cards, yes. So you would lay out the run, and then you put a jack. Jack, on. just put the jack right next to the queen, you know, just below it and everything, and that's automatic 19 right there. Too. If you've got a run and then you've got an additional king, does that also do? You, can you put that down for an extra couple of points or no? No, you have to. If you have a queen, if a king, queen. I'm playing right now, they're doing that. It's just no. The, if you have a king and a queen, you could do that, but you can't put something solo down and yeah. say, "I'm going to use the queen that's in that in that run to make to make and another points, yeah. a marriage." Okay. So you said something about putting all the melts down on the table before you start playing. Yes. Yes. I'm going to explain that to you, right? That's the next thing we're going to go. Because we're going to go into it. And is that before or after someone wins the bid? That's the next step to, okay. to talk about that. <laughs> we want to change places during the break. And I think, I, think you, I, think you, I think you got good questions. But my memory is not good. I haven't played since then. Down where the, run, um, where the marriages yes. are. And it has two, one set, two, two sets, four. All right. Queens. Oh, the queens. Okay, the four queens. Six points. 
Oh, it's, it then, should be 120 instead of just 20. Oh, okay. Of queens, yeah. Oh, is there a misprint on there? Yeah. Oh, it might be a misprint on it. We'll fix yeah, it. 120. Go ahead and. Okay. Um, 120 for what? Three sets three of queens. Sets three sets of queens. If anybody gets it, I'll quit playing. <laughs> I've never seen it. I've never seen it. And in my whole life, I've never seen, I've, I've, I have come within one ace of triple aces. I have, my pers personally, but I've never seen anybody get trip aces, trip any, anything like that. I've seen, I've seen a quad pinochle, four, four queens of spades and four jack of diamonds in one person's hand. I've seen that. So... There's all kind of oddities that could happen when you're playing pinochle. You could, you could. Um, today they had a real odd one. They was, somebody had a double run and somebody had double aces or double pinochle. All of us had uh, oh, aces around. Oh, aces around. Everybody had aces around. Now, folks, there's only 16 aces. That means everybody got four aces and four aces in different suits. That's pretty miraculous. I mean, as you really think about it, a random selection of cards, that's pretty hard to, to, to come by. So, okay. Oh, okay. You've got all these cards to deal with. You know everybody's going to get 20 cards, all right? And then you've got to try to hold them. Some people, and I think John has racks there for people to hold them. It's difficult to hold them, but you try to do the best you can. My recommendation is that you kind of squeeze them close together. You're just looking up here. You, you can see the suits and everything else, but try, try to just keep them tight as you can, and then you can, you know, squeeze them into a smaller, smaller pack. Most people don't hold their cards like this, okay, because the other people can see. So you always should bring them back, and you, and you can kind of use your hands and kind of just make it like a little semicircle. And that's so somebody doesn't accidentally see your cards, and, and, and not that anybody's cheating or anything like that. It's just sometimes people, the other day, somebody was dealing there, and they were very nice about it, but they were dealing like this. <laughs> so everybody got to see what was being dealt, you know, uh, and I was able to call out, you know, I think it was you, you had three aces of spades right, last week, right? On the first eight cards she had, she had like five aces and three aces of spades, and I, I said, hey, this has got to be a misdeal. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, the bidding, and when you talk about bidding, prior to playing the cards, everybody's got their 20 cards now. Prior to playing the cards, you have to bid to see who's going to be the Trump master. I guess that's what you want to call it. I hate using that word. <laughs> Anyhow, naming Trump is the privilege of the person that bids the highest. They can name any suit they want as long as they have a marriage in that suit. But it's important not to bid so much that they can attain the points they need to save the bid. What I mean by that is if you get the bid for 50 and I have 20 meld and my partner has four meld, we have 24 together, then we need 26, okay? If I bid at 60 and we need 36, it's a lot tougher to save it. So you wanna bid as low as you can and t effectively to take the bid and then have enough meld so that you only need the 20. I don't care if you have 150 meld, you still need 20. You still got to get those 20 tricks. So if you had kings and queens and jacks and pin double pinock on this and no aces, you may have gazillion points, but if you can't get 20 between you and your partner, you're going set and all that meld goes away and you go back the bid you took it for. So it's really important to have a mix of meld, trump, and aces. It really is important. What's so opening bid? The opening bid is 50. We're going to start it with 50. So I doubt the person that was sitting here would be the first person that goes clockwise. All right? They can start with any amount they want for a bid. They can bid 50, 51, 52, 60, 65. They can go 80. They can do anything they want. All right. When they say 50, because they're not obligated to say anything, they don't have to say nothing. All right. But if they say 50, they're saying, I want the bid 
and I'm looking for help from my partner in meld. So I'm going to bid low and hopefully my partner, and I'm going to talk about that, how to pass the, to tell without saying what you have. So they bid 50. Then it goes to this person here. I dealt. Now, if everybody passed, me as a dealer gets stuck with the bid 50. If everybody, I'm going to say it again, if everybody passes, then I get stuck. If I have a don't have a marriage, I go set. So you can hang somebody that way. Most of the time, your partner has played the game enough that know they need to save their partner if they've got anything at all, especially a marriage. I mean, if their hand is really bad, they may take a chance and say, you know, maybe have two points uh, and a pinochle. A pair marriage and a pinochle, they could save, but the, the, the marriage they have is in a suit, they have only four of them. So they don't really want the bid, but they could save their partner. They take a chance and they pass because they can't pass meld and they just hope their partner has a marriage. Otherwise, they go set. So sometimes you have to gamble and, and pass on your partner. But most of the time, this person tries to save. So when this person bids 50, they saved me. I'm not on the hook. There's no obligation to this person. So this person either wants the bid now or wants to pass meld to me. So let's say they had 30 meld and they wanted to pass it to me because they wanted me to take the bid. They would just use the, the second number, 53. The three means they got 30 mil. So if they go 53, they have 30. If they go 52, they have 20. If they go 57, they have 70, okay? If they, but here's, here's a, a really interesting item. If you go 59, Nobody's allowed to use 59 unless you're going, you know, 56, 57. That's a different story. But I mean, if you go right up to 59, you're telling your partner that you got double aces. It's not in the rule, it's, it's, you know, it's not a rule book, but everybody knows it that plays Pinochle. That's a way of telling people, you know, hey, I, not only do I have meld, I have double aces. I can help you. You can name a suit that you may not want to bring in yourself, but now I can help you. But anyhow, it goes in increments. If you go one over the person, 50, 51, then this person's asking for meld, and then this person's asking for meld. If this person doesn't have 20 meld, they should pass. Okay? If you don't have 20 meld, you pass. Your partner always should assume that you have 10. So I'm going to assume, Regina, if you're my partner and you pass, you got 10. You may have 8, you may have 12. I'm going to count you in for 10 if you pass. You can't pass me 10, okay? You can never pass me 10 meld because when you bid one over, you're saying you want the bid. So you don't want to fall into that trap. If you got 20, 30, 40, you bid it by increments of that. But if you don't, then you just assume your partner is going to take you for 10 meld and, and hope for the best. That's all you can do. Sure. What if you have aces around you want your partner? You yeah. can only tell your partner that you have aces around if you're the first bidder and bid 51. It's another thing like the double aces. So in other words, if this person here passed and Marianne brought the question, if she was my partner here and she bids 51, she's telling me that she has aces around because that's that's a code for it, but it's legal, okay? And she has aces around. Now, because she didn't pass me mail, she just told me about the aces. I know she has 10, and I'm going to assume that she has another 8 to 10. So I'm going to count her for 20. Even though she only gave me aces, but she may only have 12. But the aces make up for the deficiency in some of the mail. But I'm going to count her for almost 20 because she gave me that bid. But only the first person that bids 51 out of the get means that the aces. Okay, it's always important to pass that information on to your partner if you can. If she had aces but she wanted to bid, she would bid 50. She wouldn't pass the aces. In other words, she had a run, she had aces, and she was looking for meld from me, and this person passed, she would bid 50. She wouldn't bid 51. Wouldn't she, bid she doesn't want to pass me aces if she wants to bid. When she tells me she has aces, she really tells me, hey, I can help you I don't, I don't need to bid. I still might think she might have a better hand to give it back to her, but 
in, in most cases, it's the fact that she wants to support me. When you did 50. Yes. Initially, do you determine the suit? Do you say the suit? No, you can't say anything. You just You're, say 50. You just say 50. When is the suit? Well, when is Trump? Whenever, whoever gets the highest bid, they're called, they get to call Trump and bring in the suit. And we're going to get to that in just a second. Now, if you're playing a local game or you're playing a home game, there are little rules that people let you do. Okay. Like this person, I dealt. This person passed. And Marianne, I'm going to use you again there. She's there and she doesn't want the bid either, but she knows she has to save me. So what would you say and how would you say it, Marianne? Weekly, to my Fifty. Fifty. <laughs> or, and some people let you say, save. That means I don't want. But if, she, if you say it with no enthusiasm and you say it kind of quiet, it tells your partner, if I have to, I'll do it. But you don't have to. If you go like this, 50, oh, your partner's passed, and then all of a sudden you're there. Oh, no, I didn't really want it. You know? So don't, don't get excited if you don't want it. Just... 50, you know, just 50, you know, if I got to, I got to. I, I mean, you know, you just like charades a little bit, but, you know, you, you can't say, I don't want, I don't really want it, but I'm bidding 50. You can't say that. But the way you say it, that's what you're saying. All right? That's, what if you're not the dealer, you're the first person, uh -huh. and you didn't bid anything? You don't, that means you don't have meld and you don't want it. Okay, and then the second person bids 51. 50. 50. 50. If your person, if your partner had four aces, there's no way to signal you. Yeah, like if, if the first person passes, they could say 51. That tells me they have four aces. No, but if somebody already said 51, now you're up to your partner. You're the first person to bid and you, you passed. Then the second person bid 50. Now your partner's... Oh. Up. Your partner really can't signal you. My partner would have been in the first two. No, no, she's no. talking about better number three. The partner from partner's the partner's number three. Pass. You're number two. Your partner's number. F Wait a minute. I don't know. Your partner's number two. You're number four. Number First four. bidder's one, two, three. She's talking about the third bidder. Um, that's what I'm talking about. Not that you're the dealer, that you're the first person. Only one person can pass the aces. Okay, so you pass. Number one passes. Number two says 50. Okay. If number three, if your partner wants to send. Well, my a partner would be number two. Yeah. Partner my partner's opposite me, number two. No, number, no. She's I'm saying, I'm saying you're not the dealer. You're not the dealer. You're the first person after the dealer. Okay. And you pass. Okay. And then the next person said 50. All right. If your partner wants to signal something to you. Why? I'm out. So I, I pass. Out. They okay. can't. Okay. They, they so shouldn't. It doesn't make sense. Sure they okay. shouldn't. I'm out. I, they, there's so no they reason to tell me anything. Whether they want to carry. On their own. They're going to count me for 10. I could have 8, I could have 12, I could have 14, but I can't bid 20 because I don't have right, right. 16 or more. You can, you can fudge it and, and bid 52 and say, that's close. Because maybe one of the marriages you have is going to be in a Trump and that'll make it two okay, more so points. the assumption is when you're bidding, what do you have if you do bid. Yes. The no. No. The assumption is not 20. The assumption is you have 10 if you don't bid. The assumption is and if you bid... You're going to bid 52, 53, 54. You're going to tell your partner in increments of that last digit how much meld you have. So if you had 40 meld and this person bid 50, you're going to bid 54. You're going to tell me you got 40 meld as my partner. If you had 30 meld, you'd bid 53. If I have nothing, I don't... You pass. But okay. if, you're deal, if you're first to act, so to speak, and you pass, then that person there has to take it on their own. Right. Okay, I've got this meld, I can take this many tricks, so that's when they would bid to beat the others out. Possibly, okay. depending on what they, what they have, yeah. So we pass the meld back and forth, and that helps the other person determine how high they can go. So if you passed me 30 meld, and I've got 20 meld, I know I can go at least 70, because I'm going to need 20 anyhow. I'm probably going to need, you know, 20 or less. So I know how high I can go. So I might, and this is more advanced, I might stick a bid in as people are going around, I might go 65. So I can, I shut down everybody else from passing meld back and forth. You know, my partner's already told me they give me 30 or 40 meld, I know what I have. So I jump up to 65 knowing that the other team's gonna have to go 70 
or 75 to take the bid from me and they don't know what their other partner has. So it's a, it's a cutthroat kind of way. But Why couldn't they go to 66? You know, it's by five. Once you get to 60, it goes up by fives. Oh, okay. My four, I, didn't, I didn't say that. That's a good point. No, it's a very good point. It goes up by fives. So 65 is a much better bid than a 60 bid. Okay, the reason being is it really bumps it up so somebody has to go 70 and makes it really tough for them with their meld and then the 20. So it makes them have to get like 27 or 28, which is a tougher road to hold when you're trying to get your, your tricks and everything. Here's a, I mean, there's a lot of little nuances in this game and some of it's advanced. For instance, if I know I can go 70, I might go 60 to try to get you to go 65. All right, knowing that I can come back at 70. All right, if I think I can hang you at 65 and I think that I have enough to, to set you at 65, I might do that too. But then I might just come back over for 70, knowing that you can't do 75, and if you do, you're going to go set anyhow. So I can use. I can use the interruptions for telephones or anything. <laughs> That's why they say at the Ellen Show and all these things, turn off all the phones, there'll be no phones going off. That's pretty bad when it's your own crew. Yeah, it's, it's my own crew. <laughs> What's that Trump line again? You're fired? <laughs> no. uh, you're doing a good job. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, so anyhow, the bidding takes it takes form. So let's say this is, say, 50, and let's say Marianne was here. She said 52. This person says, I want the bid. Marianne says, I don't want the bid, but I, I can pass you 20 mil. This person over here says, I bid 55. What did this person just tell this person? 30. Who said 30? 30. 50, 52, 55. They went three over this person. So that's 30 mil. They're passing this person. And that's what this person's looking for is the 30 mil, okay? Now, Mary Ann passed me 20. I look in my hand and I see I got a run. I got 19. I don't have anything really. I have 19. She's got 20. She could have 24. She could have 16. But she's got 20. So now I, I got 39 and I know I need 20. So I know I can go about 60 and I'd be pretty safe if I have some aces to go with it. If I don't have aces, I'm just, this person bid, I'm gonna pass. This person's gonna bid, she's gonna pass, you know, because she was just passing mail. We're gonna get out of the way. But if I have enough aces and I think I can make it, I'll stick a bid in there that's gonna, I know that she passed 30 mail. I, I don't think that this person asking for mail has less than 20. They probably have 25 or 30. So they got 60 mail, they're gonna need 20 to make it anyhow. So why risk myself by sticking a bit in there? I'll just get out of the way. And unless I had like 40 meld myself to go along with her 20 meld and I still had good trump or good aces, that's the only reason I would get in there. So the highest bidder is, let's say uh, she bidded uh, 55, I passed, she went one over. If one over means I want it, I'll take it. She could go to 60, the, uh, he could go to 60, 60, you know, anything you want, but usually one over this bit. And then Marianne, I was using as an example here, she had bid at 20. The only reason she'd get back into it is if she had a lot more. But if she only had 20, even if she had a run, she, she's only going to get into the low 30s. She's still going to need, you know, 25 to 30 to bring it in because this bidding is going to go up over 60. So she's just going to try to be a nuisance to everybody and try to sit there with her aces and hope that I have some and hope that somehow we can save our meld. And by I mean saving our meld, there's a little difference. It, it, some places, and the rule might say you have to get 20 to save your meld as the person that takes the bid, but also the people that don't take the bid, they have to get 20. They don't play that rule here. It's a local rule. They play whatever, right? You do, play you're playing it now. Oh, you are playing that. Okay, good. What was the other one that you played different? Play different in the mail itself. You have. You don't have to have twenty. So you have to have twenty to lay it down. Right there. They don't have to have twenty to lay it down. You can lay it down if you have eight. Or so. That's a little bit different than I've I've played. But that's that's okay. That's a local rule. Everybody understands the rule. We play by the rules of the club. And and John's running it. And and I support that a hundred. 150, but you should know what, what it is in case you go someplace else as well. Now, right. you have to beat the card. Like, if you put down a queen and the 
person next to you, they have to play the king. Yeah, we're going to get the, the yes, we're going to get the, 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 the king ten or eight. We're going to get to playing the cards as soon as we finish this this okay. this mail thing. That's that, no, that's a, excellent question. How many points are there in the deck? Because I know with a, I know with a, with a normal deck is twenty five, twenty four plus you get one point more for the last point. So there's there's going to be forty eight plus two. Forty eight plus two. Okay. And we'll get to the tricks later on. And then two, the extra one is the, whoever takes the last trick gets an extra two points. Okay. So that's how you you get to that. I so. Have two quick questions. Sure. You passed, you're done for that round. You you're passed till next deal. And if your partner passes, the next person say bids 52, you want that bid. Aren't you, I and mean, suppose you have 30 mil, aren't you really just going to go up like one point? That's right. To get the bid, you don't have to do the no. 30 points. Right. One and point I'm going to go, possible. I'm going to go one bid, either enthusiastically or mildly. <clears throat> so if Mary Ann passed me 20, and they pass 20, pass, and it comes to me, if I want it, I'm gonna say 53, just like that. No uh, confidence, okay? If I, if I don't really want it, or I, I'd rather, if you, I'm, I'm gonna ask her a question with my response. Do you, can you take it? You have 20 mil, you may have a run too. Do you have a hand that supports it? So I'm gonna go 53, you know. <laughs> not so enthusiastic, not so interested. And then she'll say, too bad. Pass. Why would you go to 53? To save her. Because she bid 52 and she may not have a marriage. She may have aces. Right. She bid 50. No, she bid 52. Right. But if, if, if she passes and I pass, she gets a 52. If she has aces, queens, jacks, a pinochle, no marriage, we go set. We don't have a marriage. We go set, the team, the team. We go back to whatever she. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't. We can't, we can't get on the board. We have to get enough meld on the board, and we have to have a marriage in a trump. If we don't have a marriage in a trump, we're set. So she has to. So if I didn't save her and let and dumped it on her, she could make us go set. So I'm telling her, I got a marriage, I don't really want it. Then she looks at, re-examines her hand. And then she, she might go back to me like this, 54. In other words, I don't really want it either. Then I make up my mind, okay, 55. And then she, she knows that I'll take it. And I'm sorry, what do you have to get when you, when you lay out your cards? What do you, what's the minimum you have to get? From 20 you? total. 20, okay. But you'd really need a lot more than that because right, your bid's right. going to be 50 to 60. So you really want to get up into the 30, 40 range. Yeah. Remember, if you bid in 60, you need to get 40 meld to only need 20. You never want to have to get more than 20. A 20 is a, a tough row. Sometimes you'll get 34, 36. I mean, you, it'll just fall into place. The cards will fall out. You'll have it. Your partner will have it. And they'll support. But you can't count on that. You can't really count. Unless you're sitting there and you're looking at your cards and you've got 12 and one, tr tr 12 Trump and you got four or five aces. I mean, you're going to get there. You're going to get 30 something tricks. I mean, there's no, no problem at all. So anyhow, this person goes one over, then she passes the 55. So this person gets 56. They lay down their mail and they got 82 mil. Yeah, they still need 20. Doesn't matter how much they got, they need 20 if they were deficient in mail. So in other words, they're going to have to fill 20 in tricks now, no matter what. Everybody that takes the bid has to get 20. And we have to get 20. Marianne puts her 20 down, I put my 17 down, we have 37. We need 20 to save our 37. Okay? So that's where it starts then. Whoever so then you get 37 plus whatever points you Tricks. Get tricks. Right, we'll add them together. We'll add them together. 20 tricks. You have to get to between the two of you, the kings, aces, and tens, you're gonna, or the last trick, which is an extra two points, you're going to have to get 20 between the, the team to save your meld. If you don't, it all goes away, you get a zero. You don't go negative or anything like that. So then... We've, just, we've decided this person named Trump. They had a run in clubs. Clubs was the Trump that they named, and we all meld and everything. And we, everybody picks up their cards. This person is first to play. Now, I've seen it many times where this person leads out with Trump. No, they lead out with aces of Trump because they got nine Trump, three aces. 
They're just figuring the disbursement of the other cards. Maybe whoever has that other ace is, might be hanging. In other words, hanging, in other words, be naked. In other words, they may have queen, king, jack, three cards. When they play a third ace, that ace might fall. That means that the, this person here's 10 is good. If they have an extra 10, that means that other 10 is good because they can play it and they can run the trump out of everybody's hand. They can control the game. Very rare that that happens. Very rare, okay? But if you've got it and you've got a surplus of trump and you have the aces with it, you can do that. Okay, but I wanted to cover that because some people ask all the time, why don't you lead out with Trump? You, if I have seven Trump, one ace, I don't want to lead my Trump, or especially my ace, I don't want to get rid of the power so somebody can come get my cards. I want to keep it as protection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play every ace that I have. Now I'm going to signal to my partner what my shortest suit is when I play. The first ace that I play is going to be the shortest suit, and that's telling them that later on we have another phone call. Hey, mine might go off too, so who knows? You know, if anybody has my number, you can call me and we'll see what happens. So, anyhow, you lead out. Let's say I had three diamonds. I named clubs Trump and I had three diamonds. So, my first ace is going to be a diamond. My partner has to be looking at what I play because I'm signaling them certain things along the way. And so when I play my ace of diamonds, if they ever get in, in other words, their chance to lead later on and they're done playing their aces, I want them to play a diamond back to me so I can trump it. That's what I want them to do. So I'm signaling right out the bat, because I'm in control here, my shortest suit. But right after that, I'm gonna go to the club, the spade, I'm going to alternate my cards and then go back to where I had two aces or three aces. I'm not, if I had three aces of spades and clubs with trump, I'm not going to go ace of spades, ace of spades, ace of spades. Somebody might only have two spades and on the third ace they trump it. Now I didn't get to play my aces and now I have to let them get a lot of tricks and everything. it'll throw everything off. So what I want to do is play my short ace, then all the other aces, but never like ace of clubs, ace of clubs, then ace of spades, and ace of hearts. I want to go ace of clubs, ace of hearts, ace of spades. I want to alternate them so that there's hardly any chance that I'm going to get counterfeited or trumped. And, and, and I'm, looking, I'm looking to my partner. There's two ways your partner can tell you that you can get to them without worrying about this person. In other words, there's a, there's a shortcut to bypass this person. And the two ways are with an ace and a jack. So if my partner, Marianne, has, if I, I named clubs, and she has three aces of clubs, all right? Or no, that's not, that's, that's a different suit. Let's say I had aces around that, and she had three spade uh, aces, and I lead a spade out. If she puts a jack or an ace on that hand, that tells me she has the rest of those aces. And all I have to do then is play a king, forcing a 10, a pointer, out of this person, and she'll play the, the uh, ace. She doesn't want to give me a jack or an ace unless absolutely she has it. And the reason she'd give me a jack rather than an ace is because if she doesn't have a 10, all right, she doesn't want to waste an ace. If she has a 10, okay, then she can give me the ace, and then she can play later on. She can play the 10, it's as good as an ace. She doesn't have to play the other two aces, she can just play the 10, and her aces are still good. And she's giving me a, you know, a signal by doing that. If she wants to, so a jack or an ace is a way to signal your partner. These are little nuances of the game, but you should know if you're not doing it, your opponents might and that means that they have an advantage. Every advantage, whether it be poker, any card game, hearts, that you can pick up something uh, from your partner somehow, some kind of signal legally, it helps you design how you want to play the hand. So if I can get through to my partner, I play my aces, and as soon as I'm done, I'm going to lead out that spade, get to her, and then she's going to... Your partner's job, once they get in, is to play all the aces that they have. And they can start with trump, okay? They can start with the trump ace. But get the aces out and, and try to catch as many tricks as they can. And then when they're done, 
go back to the shortest suit that the partner told him. I told him it was a diamond. Remember, I lived, my first ace was the diamond ace. So when they're done and they don't know what else to do, they either lead a diamond. If they wanted to lead a trump, they could do it, you know, like a, a queen forcing out a, if there was another ace that hadn't fallen, for instance, and they wanted to force it out, they could do that. But I would prefer they hit that, that shorter suit so that I can trump it and then I'm back in charge and then I can roll through some other cards that I want. In other words, we want, my team wants to control the action to counterfeit their action. So when they get in that their aces are all butchered up and everything, they're not good anymore. When I say not good is that we've played enough of those cards and some, I was short or somebody else was short and they get trumped. And so they have a struggle getting to the 20, which means they don't get to save their meld. Okay, that's the whole essence of it. The, the essence is getting the bid, making the bid, and not allowing your opponents to make their 20 so that they don't get their meld. And, not, and of course, not going set. Now, you asked the question earlier on. If I play here um, a king, this person here, if they have as a king of hearts, let's say it's not Trump or anything, but let's just say it's a king of hearts. If this person here has a 10 or an ace, they have to play it. They have to beat this card. They can't put a queen or jack. They can't, that's called sloughing off. They can't do that. They can't play a diamond on it uh, unless diamond was trump. If they had no hearts, they could do that if the, the other trump. But they have to beat this with the 10 or the ace. Most cases, they're going to use their ace because if they play the 10, the other person might have an ace and get three points out of it. If they, if you leave that out, they have no heart and no trump. Do they have to trump it? They have to trump it. I'm looking, and everybody else should be looking at the table. When somebody doesn't, this is called following suit. When you don't follow suit, you have to trump. And if you don't trump, you got to make a mental note of it. Because John, a week ago, so he, said, he said, I didn't show up with my head on my shoulders. Because I just, he caught it himself. I caught it. He knew I caught it. And as soon as the, the next card came out, which was a trump, two hands later, I said, let's go back and look at that one hand right there. And he said, yep. I did it. I did it, and I knew I did it, and I, and I do it again. He said, <laughs> I, I was, I, I, I couldn't get away with it though, because I knew it was going to come out, and you, and you were at my table, you're going to catch it, and it, it happens. When that happens, the person that reneges, that team goes set the bid. What does that mean? In other words, let's say I took the bid for sixty-five, and John was my partner, and he reneged on a hand. Somebody called us on it. We go set 65. That means you lose 65. We, we, we go minus 65. We don't get our meld. We go back 65. If let's say this team reneged, then and then the hand, the game is over. Right at that, well, as soon as the reneg is called, you don't continue on. You don't count the cards or anything like that. Then you either go, you either go, um, is it you get the bid or get the meld, whatever is higher. Non bidder. Yeah. Okay, and you renege. You know. Right. Um, and if you're the bidder, stops, right. The bidding team gets the greater of their melt or the bid. Or the bid, right. So, if, in other words, if, if I bid 65 and our meld was 40, then we'll take 65 on the scoreboard. We don't get to count the tricks. And that could be a, I could, you know, calling the reneg may have hurt me because we may have had 30, 40, you know. That happened today. Yeah. You could have more points, but you're going to lose. But you should call it because it throws the whole, the whole game off. When a suit is led that you don't have any of, and you have to trump, yes. do you have to play your highest trump card? No, you can play any trump card you, if you're the first person to trump, you play any trump card you want. I recommend that you always play a pointer. If you know that you're going to get it, play the king or a ten. Try not to play the ace because that's, a, that's a, another trick in itself. But if you think you're king and nobody else is going to trump, play the king. Don't play the queen or the jack. You know, uh, if your your team needs to get as many points as you can, you didn't name Trump. Take the points. There's so many times on Monday I come and I walk around the different people's table and they get to 19. And I can point out this lady right here last week. <laughs> she could have put a counter on one. She put a queen instead of a... She wanted to save her 10 for something else. And then the 10 went to another trick to somebody else, they wound up with 19. If she gave that point, they would have got the 20 plus the 30-something meld. As it was, they lost the meld, they lost the 20, they got zero. 
And so it was a difference of like 67 points, one keeping one counter when they should have played it. So you should always help your partner whenever you can. It's not your job as the partner to, to take tricks and, and to do that. You're, it's to play straightforward cards, give your partner points, play your aces, and get out of the way. Don't do anything else. Let them be in charge. If they, they have the roadmap. They know what they're doing. They're supposed to know what they're doing. They're in charge. You're just supportive of them. You can't try to up, you know, uh, one-up them because you put them in a trick because they didn't, they didn't expect that to happen. Okay? So anytime a card is led, you have to beat it. If you don't have it, you have to play Trump. If you don't have Trump, if I play a heart and let's say Trump is clubs and you have no clubs and you have no hearts, you can play anything you want. Based on who you think is going to get the trick between the next two people and the person that led, you might want to throw a counter on it, like a king or a ten, or you might put a jack, knowing that my partner is going to take it, therefore. Don't give him a point, but if you think there's a chance your partner may get it, put a point out there. That might be the point that gets, saves you your, your meld. Any questions on that? Let me take a look at our nice handout that uh, Amber was nice enough to print out for me. We talked about the dealing. We talked about the meld. We talked about the trump. And then we're going to get to the playing phase. But uh, before we get to that, I was going to give everybody uh, like a five-minute break, and then we'll come back and answer some questions. And then I'll need uh, a couple of... We're going to move the table a little bit so that the camera can still be on here. And then we'll all gather around, but I'll need three subjects to sit down at the table. <laughs> And we'll deal the first hand with all the cards up. Let you put the cards in the order they are. And I'll go around and identify the meld. I'll ask everybody to try to, in their, if you're looking over this person's shoulder in your own head, count up the meld. See if you get it right and what they have. And then we'll talk about that. And then we'll, we'll do it maybe a, another time. And then, then we'll deal it out and we'll show you how it, it really works. Does that work for everybody? Yeah. And any questions during the break, you come up and ask me. But if they're good for on camera, if you think they're good, and every question is good because I can't think of them all. Do it when we're back on camera. All right, let's take a break and we'll have our engineer shut it off. <laughs>